What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Today's video is going to be the first installment of driveway powerlifting. Here we're outside, we got the ES1, Rogue ES1 squat rack, which is a really good deal, I think the best value. And we got some plates here, and the Rogue bench, and then you see the bar. A 20 kilo Ohio power bar um, with the thin collars. That's all we need. We got everything we need. Also, for those who have not seen the Arnold live stream. Candido pulled up seven and looked like he maybe had another 20 or 30 pounds left in the tank. That looked great. And I totaled 16.75. So I am 25 pounds away from my lifetime goal total of 1,700 at 183 pounds. Now, I will have some additional camera angles and some new stuff on that in probably a really big epic video probably for the release of my seven week program. And that will probably all come to a conclusion right before my next meet, if, if I'm gonna be totally transparent with you guys. So it, it's one of those things where I would rather just make this perfect because I have some ridiculous edits and ideas going. It, it'll probably honestly be a straight up 200 hour edit uh, it, overall. Like it's already was entering that 50 plus hour range and I really kept having ideas uh, beyond what I was actually able to accomplish. So I just need a huge time span for all these to come together. Also, other than that, um, I am most likely gonna do a collaboration with Ray Williams, uh, the first guy to ever squat a thousand pounds for those, for those few people unaware of that level of greatness. Um, he's basically agreed to do a Skype interview, most likely. We'll see, we haven't agreed on the specifics yet. Um, but then also the 405 Corona Squat Challenge is why I wanted to get this up because I'm gonna do Olympic squats here with 405, three sets of six to eight, around RP six and a half, and then I'm gonna AMRAP, just hit as many reps as possible, as deep as possible, and I have a whole competition going on based on Instagram, which I'll announce the winners. Uh, right now, the leader, as of right recording this, the leader is 27 reps by Joe Sullivan. He had 27 reps with 405. I'm just trying to hit 12 to 14. I'd be happy with that. So I asked you guys on Instagram what video topic to do for today. Most people said to expand upon my thoughts on the collaborations with Omar, Alan Thrall, and the rest of the boys. And that is on coming back from the quarantine. So first I'll include a link in the description to everything that I bought and recommend. Also my plan is to have this bald head as long as I total 1700 pounds. So every meet where I total 1700 is gonna be on there and if I don't, I'm gonna regrow it. So once you get your equipment or if you live in a Southern state like Texas, where they're about to open up fairly soon. And if you live in California, I simply recommend that you move. But anyways, uh, the main thing in my opinion is to establish frequency first. I think frequency should remain unchanged. And even if you have to do literally one set of squats, that's better while maintaining your two to three times a week squatting than doing your three sets of eight, just feeling absolutely trashed and then having to just go one time a week initially. Regardless of your opinion on RPE, I also recommend that you, no matter what, have the second workout be completely RPE based with no goals whatsoever. My second workout was a three by three squat with 315 pounds. That light, and it felt like my right adductor was gonna rip off the bone. By the way, what's funny is I found the perfect music for the video that I'm gonna work on down the road for that highlight video because there's some fan-made Mike Dean versions of songs that literally got removed from the internet. So I downloaded it off YouTube and then the whole channel's wiped out. So for those who don't know, Mike Dean, in my opinion, is the best producer in hip hop history. Uh, basically responsible for Kanye sound, the outro of Highest in the Room on Travis Scott's song and the Fortnite song, but then also Tupac and NWA. Like go on YouTube if you haven't, if you like the outro to Travis Scott songs, just go on YouTube and look up Mike Dean M -W or N O O G. I think it's pronounced Moog is the instrument, but it's basically a bass synthesizer. His videos are crazy, just seeing him just chop it up. So that being said, I'll throw one on now. When you have the bone, he succeeded and now he has no purpose. He sinks into loneliness, into depression, into aimlessness. Or he's about to play. Yeah, I think he's I think he's just fine with it. Brady! 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 I need to squat there. Yeah. Brady. I need a squat.
<laughs> yeah, bring it back. Isn't Brady a great dog? He also has pretty muscular legs too. My ex let me keep him um, and now I can use it as a ploy to get her back. I mean, these squats are looking overall pretty good. You know, the depth is definitely right where I want it to be, which is funny because my low bar squats are above parallel more than even I would like. Um, I've made a post before on how I actually do this with my training now all the time is I squat high a very significant percentage of the time and then it's really later in the prep and it's enough of the ratio that's hitting depth on the competition squats that then makes things okay. But when we're going for the desired training effect of, of simply hypertrophy, then that's where depth all the time matters more because now I'm not concerned about um, efficiency. I'm concerned about training effect. And those are of course two different things. So what you see here is my preparation for the Corona Squat Challenge. Um, hopefully me saying that doesn't demonetize this video. Now the way I set up things does vary somewhat cycle to cycle, but to clarify what I mean when I say to get right back to singles, that's something that I say that confuses a lot of, especially the more mainstream YouTube audience, is um, basically the goal is to have a projected max of around 590 pounds for my squat. Let's say minus 10 pounds of what I've done before. So every primary squat day, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, if possible, with 10 pounds less than my last meat prep. That's it. Honestly, for me, it's gonna be hard to go back to lifting in a regular gym setting because I love lifting outdoors. It's so, it just feels so good. It reminds me a lot of track and field where I was never as gifted at track, but it was so much fun having that outdoors environment where it just made it feel like a field trip while you're also doing what you love. Okay, so to talk about why my goal is 12 to 14 reps for this 405 challenge, it's because Zach Tellander, who has a phenomenal YouTube channel that if you haven't subscribed to already, I strongly recommend it. Uh, the best weightlifting YouTube channel there is. He, hit, he did this challenge, he hit 12 reps, and he both has a lower squat max than mine, and he has twice the range of motion because he is very long, has very good flexibility, honestly better mobility than I do right now uh, by a good amount, and I just gotta be able to tie that, come on. Like, I gotta be able to use my shortness at least because even the ratio of reps to one rep max, it really favors being shorter because uh, ATP and all that um, endurance factors as far as strength endurance only comes into consideration with 10 plus seconds of tension, um, which obviously is irrelevant for one rep max. So being short actually helps more for rep challenges than it even does for one rep max, and it still helps for one rep max. <laughs> so I better beat him. But the other end of the spectrum is Angelo Fortino, and he hit 14 reps, and his deadlift national record is 750 pounds. So he is the strongest deadlifter in the US at 83 kg at my weight class, and he did this challenge too. So those are the good minimum and maximums that I'm looking at. But to be very clear on why I said earlier, minus 10 pounds is the goal on my squat. It's because my RPE six single was minus 10 pounds in relation to that same slot. What should we do coach? What's the program? What model will you use? So if I want to make sure I make it clear to you guys is if you go in and your first single is minus 40 pounds, then you can say, okay, on week one, if I hit 465 pounds uh, instead of 505, then my end goal would be 560 pounds because that's, I get that 95 pound spread from RP six week one to RP 10 week seven. And that's why I want you to keep things very, very similar because typically the rate of progress and the effect you get out of a taper is actually fairly consistent. And then you can say in this scenario, you'll be making better gains if anything. So you could say 560 pounds would have been the minimum, maybe 570. So that's a really good way to have a realistic picture based on your individual results, not an estimated one rep max. I know it mentally is very hard to train with a goal of not having a PR, but something that you can keep in mind is as long as you do everything exactly right, on the ending test day, you could just do something fun. So for example, with myself, I'm gonna squat 565 pounds on the same slot where I squat 575 pounds on the cycle where I squat 600 pounds. <laughs> so a week and five days out, I'm gonna squat 565 minus 10. I will know that then I would have a projected one rep max of 590 after the taper most likely. And instead, I'll just pause squat 550 for fun. 
So you can still do that without actually training the paw squat the whole time or deviating and um, really becoming undisciplined potentially mentally. And something I invite everyone to do, if you are not the type of person who usually would do singles when coming back, is to zoom out here and then think, let's say it's been eight weeks since the last time you've hit a single when you get access to weights. Why extend that to 12 weeks? Maybe if you're not even the type who uses singles that often, you're still going to have a greater spacing than normal if you max out every eighth week. So you're not gonna get that same carryover if you're starting an off season with no singles recently, with really detrained motor control skills versus an off season that started right after a meet. I think that's something that a lot of people are gonna be in for a rude awakening. You're a basketball player who has not shot a basketball, essentially, you have not done your sport. But you can still have that and have high variability and have lower volume overall. If you keep everything predictable other than that at variable, odds are you'll be able to get through it just fine. But what do I know? I already have access to weights. I'm privileged, baby. Okay, I'm done. That was a good last set because I had a RP eight and a half cap on that first set. And if I reached it or surpassed it, then I was going to drop the weight. And that's exactly what I did. Cause that 265 for 10 is a little harder than it should have been. And that drop off was really hard, but I was able to keep it, the pause duration a little bit better, a little cleaner. So it's important to just follow through with your plan. Don't rationalize every time. Cause on the high bar squat, I was rationalizing a little bit. It was okay, but that's it. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching guys, please. Gotta put the narcotics down, I can feel them fucking on my kidney. And punching my liver, if I let it kill me, my mama will never forgive me.